Hey everybody, how's everybody doing today? Um, today we're going to be talking about a lot of racist issues tonight, a lot of racism, a lot of racial topics have been brought up. Um, I was listening to Star and Buckwild and they were talking about how Americans, uh, particularly African Americans, have been Uncle Tom in. And, you know, Star, as we all know, he is a very a wild and controversial radio host who's legendary in the game and always keeps it real and that's what I love about him and he brought up an interesting topic which is going to lead to today's topic in a minute which is he asked his audience what is the most racist neighborhood you've ever been to and you know he was asking callers and they were naming various places and the one place that seems to be brought up a lot are these two famous places which is Bensonhurst and Howard Beach. Today we're going to be talking about one of those neighborhoods that I personally have been through and I'm going to tell you all about and that is the E! True Hollywood story of Howard Beach, New York and the area code is 11414. Now we all know that Howard Beach, we're going to talk about this town and we're going to talk about is this neighborhood the true racism that the true racist neighborhood that a lot of people think it is I'm gonna be honest with you and before I start to get into this and you know this is gonna be a little sensitive for some areas so if you're a little sensitive you can't handle it then don't watch this because I'm gonna be honest with you and some of it what you're gonna hear is facts so I'm gonna be straight up with you Howard Beach as we all know was basically a town that no niggas was allowed to come into and as we all know that what is the legend of Howard Beach well it's very quite simple back in 1987 a young african-american male by the name of Michael Griffin was killed in that neighborhood now depending on what story you want to believe because there's a lot of stories that went into this some people believe that he came into Howard Beach to buy drugs. Other people believe that he came into the neighborhood to buy a slice of pizza. And then he was chased into the Belt Parkway by a gang of like middle class whites. They weren't even like a really a gang. It was basically a bunch of young kids who got drunk. Chased. They, I guess they just had the, you know, well, let's go kick some niggas ass. And then basically chased this kid and his friends because he was with two other people and he ran into the Bell Parkway and a car killed him now we all know that the prosecutor that was working on that case did get some convictions not really life sentence but you know basically there were two types of convictions one conviction was there was jail time for some of the people who was involved with uh, touching the bat that basically used the bat to assault uh, Michael Griffin's friends and end up killing him himself and the other conviction was the the stereotype and the legendary myth that this town cannot we cannot go to this town because the town has been convicted for that murder so now the big question is what is Howard Beach really like I'm gonna be honest with you you know I, I met someone who was from Howard Beach and we met together when we were in college and I'm not gonna lie on you I f I believe the stereotypes like everyone else that if I go there I'm gonna get killed I'm gonna be chased into the woods and be beaten to death and you know something you know I've known who, who is now my wife going on 16 years and she you know begged and pleaded for all those years you gotta come to this neighborhood because you're not going to be killed. Now you know something I've heard. You know a lot of the legend. I heard a lot of the stereotypes. Which is oh you go to that neighborhood. You're going to get killed. You, They even walk to that neighborhood. You're going to get killed. All I keep hearing is you're going to get killed. So I went to this neighborhood for the first time. You know I've been there a couple of times. But I remember the very first time I went to this neighborhood. I said to myself you know something. If I'm going to be killed, I don't got bulletproof. I don't got shit to carry myself, you know, in terms of weaponry. I mean, I'm a big guy, but I mean, I'm not somebody, who, you know, you know, I'm not the type that knows Kung Fu or anything. But, you know, I'm, I was like everyone, like, like a lot of people, when you don't know the area, you do become intimidated. 
Now, when you go to this town, Howard Beach, first of all, the the bus ride is a three-hour ride. Because if you live out in Long Island and you go on the way out to where Cross Bay is, that's a three-hour bus ride. I'm talking about you're catching uh, one bus, which is either, you know, I won't say too many buses because then you all will figure out where I'm from. But I'll put it to this way. You catch one one bus and then you go into Hicksville. Then you catch the N21 and then you're going all the way to Jamaica. Then you catch another bus and you're catching the Q41. Now when you go on the bus, you know, when you get on the Q buses, I didn't know some of this, they run all night. So when you're going out by Howard Beach, they go, they run to like 3, 4 in the morning. So that's what's kind of cool because where I'm at, that shit is dead. You all know from my past videos that out in Long Island, you know, they don't have buses running like that. So when you go out to Howard Beach, what's the first thing you notice? I hate to say it like this, but I was, there, there's a lot of pizza joints. And, you know, like the movie Do the Right Thing was saying, like when you go there, there's like Geno's and, and you know, there's the New High Park pizza, which I was dying to go to that one. But my wife was telling me that their food sucks, so I didn't go there. But, you know, when, when I do, you know, because she laughing at the background. That's what you can kind of hear a bit. But she told me the food sucked. And when I got there, first, the, the it's interesting because she told me to meet her there. I She didn't, like, bring me out there. I met her out there at her house. So I went to her house. And when you get off the bus, because there's Cross Bay. And then it's weird how the town is made because, like, when you go on Cross Bay, Cross Bay is the main road. And then everything else is just basically, like, you know, little side roads are the town itself. So, like, if you're going to Ozone Park, you're going for a long drive. If you're going to Howard Beach, you're going a little shortcut road. It's not like, you know, okay, you're in Great Neck and the whole town is Great Neck. Like, Queens and those areas work a little differently than Long Island. So, I go to Howard Beach. And Howard Beach, I swear to God, and I would tell you the honest God truth. If it's, 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 I'll put it to you this way. They stare at you, and that's for anybody. For some reason, the neighborhood does have this staring problem. Like, you walk there, and you I guess if, if they've never seen anybody before, like if you're not like a local in the neighborhood, they definitely will look at you. So you do get those looks. In terms of people chasing you, unless I think if somebody's like fucking with you, like if some kid came behind you and was like, yo, what the fuck you doing in the neighborhood? I could see you defending yourself, you know, but you don't see a lot of that, but you do see a lot of staring. Like you could walk, I'll tell you what, what I mean. Like, like when I got off the bus and, you know, I'm walking down like Cross Bay Boulevard going into uh, my wife's house to, you know, because I was going there and I was helping her pack up. And when you go down, like, her block, it's weird because even though there's nobody on the road, but everybody stares at you. Like, the windows are moving and, you know, neighbors will come out and they'll be like, you know, they'll stare at you. They don't know if they want to say hi to you or not say hi to you. I'm not going to lie. Some people did res show me some respect. They're like, you know, hey, how you doing? You know, because that's the first thing that people do in a condescension. You know, they'll come up to you and be like, hey, you know, like, you know, hey, how you doing? You know, they're like shocked. You know, and when I met my wife's landlord, I guess she was double shocked because I guess she figured, oh, well, you know, uh, my wife is moving out of her apartment. So all of a sudden, I'm knocking on the door, and I guess she thought, well, oh, God, you know, what's going on here? So all of a sudden, I'm knocking and knocking, and it's weird because my wife lives, like, in these, like, in her neighborhood, they have, like, house apartments. So when you go up the steps, it's like these long-ass steps, and you're like, okay, I know I couldn't live here because... You know, she doesn't live, like, right there in the house. Like, a lot of that neighborhood, there's a lot of, like, house apartments. You know, a lot of... I'll put it to you this way. In terms of people of color, like, you know, unless... Like, I see a lot of black people in some areas on Cross Bay, but I don't see them in Howard Beach. And if you do see them, it's, like, one or two. There's black people, but it's not like what you think. You're not going to see, like, if you're going to, uh, like, Jamaica or Harlem. Like, you'll see, like, a black dude with a white woman. And then he kind of, like, has to prove himself, which is kind of stupid. I don't know why minorities do that. Like, you don't have to prove yourself or be hard. Like, you know, I wouldn't go to New High Park Pizza anyway 
to prove that, hey, well, you know, Michael Griffin was killed there. So let me go there to show them that I'm not afraid. Because that's like dumb shit. I wouldn't even do that myself. I would just say, you know what? My wife tells me the food sucks. So fuck it. I won't go. The food sucks. Believe me, no disrespect to Gino, but they got to work on their soda drink, too, because I was kind of watered down. So I wasn't really feeling their water drinks. So they made great pizza, but the water sucked. I mean... You know, I could have spent money on buying a soda if that was the case. But that's a whole nother story I'll get to. But in terms of, like, the attitude itself, it's weird because I don't... It's kind of like, you know, my wife is telling me, like, you know, the mafia was there and, you know, there was no crime. Some dude, we were watching a YouTube video talking about, well, when Gotti was running the show, there was no crime in the neighborhood. That's bullshit because there was crime going on, just nobody said anything. Of course there ain't going to be no crime. If you got John Gotti living in the neighborhood, you know there's going to be no crime because nobody got the balls to go there and fuck with him unless you're some crazy-ass gangster trying to make a name for himself. So to say something stupid and ignorant like that just shows what type of person it is. Believe me when I tell you, if I got a gangster, we used to have a gangster where I lived back in my old neighborhood I used to live in. Believe me, that shit ain't about no protecting no crime. That was just fear. The idea that, you know, if you send anything to this man, this man don't mind coming to your house and hurt you. So the whole, well, John Gotti protect the neighborhood because there was no crime. No, let me break that part down to you. John Gotti's theory was as long as you were an Italian American or whatever part of Italy you're from and you kept it in house, believe me, he was cool with that. You bring any anybody who was black and Spanish or Asian or whatever, and you try to do business there, you getting the fuck out, and he will do anything to keep you the fuck out. So don't get don't get it twisted with the whole, you know, there was no crime. The crime was was that John God had controlled this neighborhood the way he wanted to control it. So you know something, someone had asked me, well, are there any gangsters? Like, is it anything like The Sopranos? I didn't really see any gangsters out there, but I do see, like, when you go to the restaurants, there's, like, a group of people outside. I asked my wife, are there easy, like, can you tell where the gangsters are? And she said, well, you know, they're not as visible as the movies portray. She was very honest about, she said something that was interesting to me, which was, she told me the neighborhood had got such a bad rap because of Gotti and because of... Michael Griffin, that people were afraid to put their own address in that neighborhood they were living in. See, don't go into the stereotype that, you know, these people who are ignorant and assholes think, well, you know what, hey, well, we love our neighborhood and all that bullshit and we don't want no, no niggas and spicks to come in here. Because to tell you the truth, not everybody's like that. Some people were so ashamed to even put that address on there. They were saying, well, you know, what? I'm from Cross Bay. You know, I'm from Ozone Park. People were afraid to even put their own address. And because this incident made it so difficult, it's not, it shouldn't have been fair. I understand. I was a little, me and my wife would have arguments about that. You know, should the neighborhood be punished for what happened? I think that the neighborhood should not forget what happened. You know, don't pretend that something that happened in the neighborhood shouldn't be forgotten because if you do that then how are things going to change believe me when I tell you when you go to that neighborhood you will see minorities walking on Cross Bay of course but when you go inside of Howard Beach it's not as bad as everyone thinks it is I mean you get those staring I mean people stare regardless even if you live in a safe neighborhood just when people don't know you they they get a sense of okay you don't look like he's from the neighborhood so what is he all about you know, if you're walking down the street and you're singing, fuck the police, and you're like, you know, fuck the police, and you're rapping, of course people are going to come outside and be like, you know, what the fuck is all this noise? You know, but a lot of the stuff, like, I mean, I haven't seen any racism in the street. Like, I haven't seen, like, somebody Spanish get beat up or somebody black get beat up. I more see, like, you know, like, black people trying to prove themselves. Like, I hate, like, you don't got to go to a neighborhood to prove that yourself, like, oh, well, I'm hard and I went to, you know, Howard Beach and I'm not afraid. They're like, you know, that's bullshit. You know, it's it's weird, too, because even the interracial uh, couples that live in that neighborhood, like, 
the black men feel like they have to prove something to the whites by being loud. The white women are so like, well, if my if my neighbor sees me, I won't be able to go to dinner at their house. So I gotta dip and hide and go make sure that I don't they don't see me. Like one time, uh, me and my wife went to uh, CVS. We saw this interracial couple in the store, and all of a sudden, they were like, you know, they were buying shit in the store, and then. You know, the black guy who was in the store was like, Hey, baby, how you doing? Yo, where, yo, where, the, where the collard greens at? And, you know, he was saying shit like was trying to be ignorant. And then the other woman was like, Oh, oh they're right here, honey. And she's dipping. I thought she was going to rob the place. But she went here. And then she went there. And then she went and got rab medicine. And she was like, oh, I'm coming. I'm coming, honey. And I thought like they were like high or something. And then, you know... My wife and I were sitting down, and believe me, you get quick service in there, too. Especially if you're not from the neighborhood. They figure if you sitting there, you not out of character, they'll give you service mad quick. They'll be like, okay, you know, medicine is done, no copay, out the door. You know, but a lot of that, you know, the stuff that happens in there, I don't really believe that I've seen it. If, if, I'll put it to you this way. If there's racism in there, I haven't seen it yet. But as of what I see, a lot of what I see is more like bullshit ignorance. And you see that in any town you live in. And what I mean by bullshit ignorance, like this whole thing where they want to film John Gotti's life into Howard Beach. Okay, yeah, true he lived there. And, you know, you got some dumbasses that, you know, don't know what to say in front of the camera. They'll be like, well, you know, you know something, uh, John Gotti, yo, he was a cool dude, you know. You know, we protect the fucking neighborhood. You know, you hear a lot of that accent going on. Or you hear some dumbass say, say something like, well, you know, well, you know something? I think John Gotti should have been played by Tony Soprano or something. You know, they'll, they'll, the whole accents come up. And then you got some people who are like, well, why the hell do we want to see this man's life? So, you know, what I basically want people to understand is, you know what? Not everybody in Howard Beach is what the stereotype is and let me tell you something also too when you go to our lady of grace or whatever that church is you ain't gonna see no minorities there neither everybody that was in that church was either uh, sicilian uh italian guido you name it that was in there it was all italian the only thing that was was anything of color was somebody's wallet somebody that uh didn't really belong there. The someone who the ushers that were carrying the baskets. And everybody was either old and young, but it was all strictly Italian. And it was weird too because, like, when you go there, the family, like Italian people, I know is go come in groups. And when you go into this church, because I've been to Our Lady of Grace, and oh my God, this whole fucking church is basically like, like you know, you go in. It's a small church. But there is, like, no minorities in there. I mean, none. You go in there, and, you know, they do... Like, the father is really cool, but, you know, you go there, and it's strictly, like... Like, you basically go into, like, a Gambino crime family place. I mean, I went in there, and I saw nothing but old Italians. I mean, there were some, there were some cute chicks in there, but damn, you know, no minorities. I mean, there wasn't even Jewish. There was no Asian, no nothing. You went in there, and it was just strictly Little Italy in there. And I was like, holy shit, I'm looking at this place like, okay, well, you know, I hope I hope we see something in here. I mean, you know, they, they keep that neighborhood so, like, to themselves. It's weird because it's like a little world. And, you know, like I said, you don't see a lot of people getting their ass kicked. You just see a lot of nosy people who go to church. And they're very, you know, they're very, like, Catholic, and they're into Jesus and all. But, damn, we got to step up on that church. I love the father who was preaching there, because he's kind of nice. He got to, like, wants, he wants changes, but he kind of lives in the 1960 era where he believes, well, you know, well, you know, he you want change, but you want to want God to change it. That ain't going to work. You got to try to, like... Go to Cross Bay, and you know, you and maybe you have moved that church up to Cross Bay a little, because the more minorities are on that area than inside of Howard Beach, because people figure, well, why are we gonna go inside there? Because that's the fear that people think. And let me tell you, they ain't no gangsters. I saw it. no Gambinos, no Sopranos, no Goodfellas, no Godfathers. There was none of that in the street. Just nice houses. 
I wanted to see some of that because I saw it in the movies, but I saw none of that. I saw no Michael Pirioli, no, uh, no Al Pacino, no nobody famous. Just a little small town that basically, when you walk in, you know, it's it's like when you go to any suburban town. But you know, they drink a lot of beer there. You know, you could pick up cans, and they also have this weird thing where you know a lot of people, even like if you were like recycling. Like people in that neighborhood, they'll steal your cans. So do yourself a favor. If you if you are like a can collector and you move to Howard Beach, be careful with some of the transients because they do steal your cans. So if you're a person that wants to make money off your own stuff, keep it in the house because I ain't gonna front. I did steal some of their cans too because they just throw them out like it's nothing. I could see how somebody would take it, but they do take them out there too. Well. I'll give a grading system for Howard Beach. It's a nice little neighborhood in terms of food. I give it an A. Geno's need to work on their drinks. They get an F. Um, the the bank, it's kind of nice there. They're kind of nice people. I give that a, It's not like, like some of the people there are not the ignorance. It's just when you go in the streets. Like when you meet assholes in the streets. That's when you see a little ignorance. You see a little dumbass people and they'll be like, you know, get the fuck out of the way. You know, they don't mind being opinionated there. But you see that. That's how New York is. But do yourself a favor. Go visit Howard Beach one day and you be the judge for your own self. I personally didn't see any of it. If anyone who has been through racism there, I am sorry. But I'm just being straight up honest. I haven't really seen it. I think a lot of it is because they get so much shit already for it. I think the people who are racist, if they are racist, they either say it behind closed doors. And if they're not racist, they're just kind of afraid to say it because they worry about what other people think. So you know something? If you ever do go to that town, do yourself a favor. Don't go there with the myth. Go there with the attitude of, you know what? Let me be a judge for my own self, and if it's not a great experience, hey, I'll go home. But if it is a good experience, and you know something, it is changing a bit. There was more minorities there than what I thought the stereotype. I thought it was going to be what everybody thought was just mob infested. I thought it was going to be like in the movies. But it's not really like that. It, that's just how the movies portray that in that neighborhood. It's just like, we, if you know something, just think of this neighborhood as like, Jamaica Queens but all white it's just ex it's exactly like that I'm talking about when you're going to Howard Beach when you're on Cross Bay it's mostly diverse so you know like I said when you go to these neighborhoods things have changed a little you know but like I said the town should not forget I, I, I don't say the town should be crucified I just say you know what the town has to remember that nobody owns the neighborhood there's no such thing as this is my neighborhood or your neighborhood this is just what it is, just a town that you can go to. It'd be nice to visit. And you know something? No one should have to fear to go to some place and lose their life. But you know something? At the end of the day, it's not about who owns it or where you live or where you're from. But just know that everybody is of, of a human race and know that nobody owns nothing. That we have a, 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 we have a system where freedom where we can go to any place and know that I want to know that I could be safe going there and have a great time and not have to worry about stereotype or racial implications to be judged on something when we're all equal in everybody's eyes including God so everybody hit me up with your comments tell me what you think I hope everybody has a wonderful day God bless you all and remember Give the, give the town a little chance. If you get a little bad, if it gets a little bad rap, hey, you know, don't judge everybody by it. But if you have a great time, you know, embrace it a little. And like I said, don't listen to those uh, ignorant assholes. There are some good people there. Just give it a try.